bring in Terry Gannon, Golf Channel, NBC Sports, play-by-play host. Golf Channel and NBC Sports are uh, giving you live tournament coverage of the 108th Open taking place at Royal Port Rush. Live coverage on Golf Channel, NBC Sports today through Sunday. Round two coverage continues today on Golf Channel until 4 p.m. Eastern. Terry, how are you today? Dan, I know Father Time all too well. How are you? I'm good. If we were getting the best shooters in Northern Ireland today, (laughs) how would you do? Depends how you define it. I can stand there and shoot. Do you have to move at all? You don't have to jump. No, you don't. Oh, you don't? It's a set shot. It's like a koozie set shot. I can do that. I'm in. Would you be the best on the Golf Channel coverage team? Oh, I'd have to think about that. I think Jacobson can play a little bit. He might be able to shoot. I think I got him. No, Billy Ray Brown. No, he's more of a post player. Sands. No, Sands has got nothing. So, yeah, I'm good. What about I'm Faldo? Right. Does Faldo have any athleticism aside from golf? I think it's all about the swing. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think I'm going to take him out there on the court anytime soon. All right. What do you make of what Tiger is saying here about father time? And how's this different from Tiger in April? You know, I heard your comments a moment ago. I think they're right. I think he doesn't know, and I think we don't know. I, I don't think anybody has a clue anytime he tees it up how he's going to play right now because of the back and where he is in terms of father time and what he's been through. Um, Roger Malpe, I talked to him. He was out with him yesterday and Billy Ray Brown. And and their takeaway from ta- – and Tiger was talkative yesterday. He was talking to a lot of people. He was open and, and – It was more about being tight. It wasn't necessarily pain. It was just he couldn't get loose, you know, and it's cooler over here. It's relatively speaking, it was low 60s and then down into the 50s. It's not bad at all to play. But with where he is, he had to take, in his mind, the time off after the U.S. Open. So how do you do that? Stay sharp. Yeah. Uh, have your swing where you wanted to, and then you go out there and it's it's cool and you can't loosen up. You just don't know at this point. Yeah, but and I was watching the broadcast yesterday, and Nick Faldo said, you know, he didn't have high hopes for Tiger because of the weather there, that if this was 100 degrees or really warm like it was with Augusta, then Tiger gets looser sooner or doesn't tighten up uh, as quickly. And with the weather, although it's not that bad, uh, he said that weather would play a role in this. And, and maybe that's the case with Tiger. Maybe this is just an aberration here with just the British Open not being able to prepare and, you know, the weather not helping him get loose here. Yeah, I think he played better today. The swing looked better today. He's not done yet. He's scrambling, trying to make the cut. I don't know if he's going to get there. Uh, I think the cut's going to get the two over because I'm sitting here. I've got to go back on in a little bit. But we, we're we told we're going to have like a downpour uh, within the next hour. So it's it's going to be full effects uh, pretty soon. So he'd like to get done uh, before that. But I, I think it'll get tougher for the guys in the afternoon. So could go to two over. But I, uh, as nice as it was this morning, I think he was he came in the first tee and even the first swing, even though it went a little bit left, it looked better than it did yesterday, and he got loose quicker than he did yesterday. So I think I think Nick's on to something, and he just he can't put in the time in between to go out there and and compete, and so it's going to have to be that moment of magic or those four days of magic, which we saw. Which I, I got to be honest, I. I never thought he'd win a major championship again. Uh, A year ago, being around him, watching him move or try to move, and, you know, he shocked us all at the Masters, so uh, it could happen again, sure. More puzzling, uh, Rory's performance or Tiger? I think Rory. I mean, but but you know this. You've been around the greatest athletes in the world, and you sit next to them as an analyst. I sit next to Nick Faldo, and I try to draw out, all right, Nick, Take me into this moment, you know, walking to that first tee, the nerves at an open championship or walking up the 18th green. But this was a moment and this is an event that none of them have experienced. This is a country for whom it means so much to get this thing back here with all they've been through and and put on an open for the world here in Northern Ireland and all the hopes on Rory McIlroy, and for now a number of years since they knew they were going to get it, how many times has he gone over that first tee shot in his mind? I just think it's too big, you know, to, for anyone, yeah. not, not not for him particularly. I don't know that anybody can really understand what it was like to go out there and try to compete yesterday. 
Talking to Terry Gannon, Golf Channel, NBC Sports play-by-play host, and of course was on that 1983 NC State team under Jim Valvano, and of course also does the Olympics with figure skating. More fun to hang out with Tara and Johnny or Jim Valvano? <laughs> A little bit different. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to compare the, the two entities, and, and V would get a kick out of that. But, um, yeah, in their own right, uh, I think uh, interesting as well. The, listen, there was nobody like Jim Valvano. Walked into a room, took it over. He was on 24-7. There was a moment that I was ever in the room with him where I didn't have to have my A game or he would tear me to shreds. And if you were within, you know, 20 feet, you better bring it. Or, or he's going to just take you down with the conversation and the wit. And um, slept about four hours a night and was into everything. It was, was, was an English major, was into business, had investments, would quote the great poets and writers. There's it, never been anybody like Jim Valvano that I've been around. But also, uh, you know, revisionist history here. Do you, uh, do you tell people, you know, how much you scored or, you know, what, what role you played in shutting down Phi Slamma Jamma? First of all, it was a charge. Clyde Drexler <laughs> certainly had my feet planted. It might have been a little bit of a wraparound buckets like tackle, but that was okay back then. See, that was, that was legal back then. The game has changed a little bit then. Um, and, uh, of course, I, I averaged 25 points per game. Of course you 32 did. in that championship game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you, when you look back on Valvano looking for somebody to hug, why didn't he have somebody? Why didn't somebody hug him? He wasn't quick enough. I mean, first of all, you know, you, know, you got to be out there quickly. I don't know where Wittenberg was. Derek Wittenberg was supposed to be the designated hugger. He was in charge of that. I mean, we, we were doing our own thing. I had to throw Bailey, you know, at midcourt, and I wasn't looking for anybody. It just happened. Was, Organic. And it happened organically. Was was that a shot by Wittenberg? <laughs> oh, oh, you're serious. Oh. <laughs> I... I um, I'm, I'm, I thought, now he said, Paulie, do you have Wittenberg saying it was a pass? I have different articles from around the game say, saying that it was a, a lob pass by Wittenberg for Charles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We worked on that. That was our last <laughs> play. We, we drew it up before the game. If we get in this situation, what we're going to do, we're going to take a 30-footer and lob it up to Lorenzo Charles with Elijah Wan right there in front of him. Yeah, uh-huh. What if you were playing? He's gotten some mileage out of that, though. I will hand it to him. What about a shot clock with you guys, NC State versus Houston? Uh, I'll pass <laughs> on that one. You think they would have roughed you up? Well, a big part of that game in the second half is number one, the altitude. And Elijah Wan started to go to the. He went to the bench, got the oxygen mask. He was worn out. So Guy Lewis in part because of that, and they had built a lead, went to their locomotion game, as they call it. They, they slowed it down. They, they, they took the air out, and that's when we started to fall. And we just kept sending them to the free throw line. If there's a shot clock, they can't do that. Um, they, they had a bit of talent on that team. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it might have been a tough second half for us. But the thing is, that year, the NCAA allowed you to play as a conference with a shot clock and a three-point line. So in the ACC – we had a 30-second shot clock and a three-point line all year long. So we were used to playing with that. And, you know, we beat North Carolina with Michael Jordan with that and Sam Perkins. So it's not like we wouldn't have had a chance at all. But I'll, I'm, I'm glad we didn't have it in the championship game. Did you ever guard Jordan? Yeah, only in a box and one, though. Um, oh, you were the was, one on the box and I one? Was, I, yeah, I was the one, so I didn't have to help. I just, I just face guarded him wherever he went. You know, this little guy. I'm sure he was frustrated as hell. Get, get away from me! Quit looking at me. Was he but, talking trash even back then? Yeah, he was good from the start. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> Do you ever bring it up with Jordan? You know about? I don't know. You, you have to see him at golf events. Is the conversation about college basketball, NC State, North Carolina, or is it about golf? Um, well, I, for example, I'm leaving a clubhouse one time having played and I'm walking to my car in the parking lot and this car with tinted windows pulls up and the window goes down and there's this voice that I hear NC state sucks. <laughs> and, I look up, and, it's, and it's Michael and he puts the window up, but, uh, but here's the thing. And here's the idea, you know, what it's like to be Michael Jordan within about 
15 seconds, his car was surrounded by kids, mm-hmm. and it took him about 20 minutes to get out of the parking lot. So it's, uh, it's good to be Michael, but it's tough as well, I would imagine. I'll leave you with this. You get two picks on who will win the Open Championship. I get two? Yeah, I'll give you two. Uh, okay. I'm going Brooks Kepka out on the limb there, but anybody who does not pick Kepka should be just dismissed okay. out of hand. Yeah. Uh, and Tommy Fleetwood. Okay. I like Tommy Fleetwood. Seven under, four under today, putting. He's in the fairway every time. I mean, yeah, I got a feeling. Westwood would be an unbelievable story. He's within one right now, I guess. Finau, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going beyond my two, but – uh, I think Finau could do it, but I'll go. I'll go Fleetwood and Kepka. I uh, I have Eric Van Ruin as one of my picks. Very nice. Yeah, That's but, a sneaky pick. Yeah, with the joggers on today, he wore the joggers. Yeah, it's a but great then, look. But then I took uh, Matt Wallace. That that hasn't gone well. I got uh, John Rahm, Xander Shoffley, and uh, Eddie Pepperell. Oh, that'd be great if Eddie won it. Do you remember his interview last year? Yeah. After a, a late night out at Carnegie? <laughs> he said he was he was hung over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, I had no shot, so I went out and drank last night, and I was kind of hung over. And, well, I didn't expect to shoot 67. Now i got to hang around and watch and see if I can win this thing. <laughs> Terry, thanks for joining us. Have fun. We'll be, uh, we'll be watching. All right, Dan. Take care. Thanks for having me. That's Terry Gannon, Golf Channel, NBC Sports play-by-play host. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune into Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.